There's been a very interesting study recently published from India. As you know, uh, there's a lot of emotion associated with living next to a tower. In fact, it's not the tower that you have to be concerned about. It's the antennas on the tower. Those are the radiating devices. This brilliant study from India took blood from people who lived right next to towers and further away from them and further away still. And what they found is that there are biological markers in the blood of the people who live closest to the towers that are consistent with increasing the risk of cancer, arthritis, and heart disease damage in their blood from living close to a cell phone tower. And they took into account how many other wireless devices they were using in their home and workplace. This is a very important study because it shows that proximity to a tower can be damaging to people if they're in the plume of the antenna. And it's the antenna, not the tower, you have to worry about. A tall, tall tower with antennas 500 feet at the top is not going to have an immediate effect on you if you're living close to it. But there is a plume. And if you had a house on a mountain within 100 meters, you might be getting a very high exposure. The Cleveland Clinic on its website says that men should not keep phones in their pocket if they want to have healthy children. The state of California has recently issued guidance saying the same thing. And many authorities in other countries agree men and women should not carry phones close to their body. So you look at your iPhone, you go to settings, you go to general, then you go to about, then you scroll all the way down to something called legal, and then you click on that and you get to RF exposure. And there inside your phone, it tells you, phones are tested at a certain distance off the body. And I'm going to talk today about how the distance the phone is held off the body makes all the difference in your exposure. If a phone is on the body, it's exceeding current test guidelines, and the French have shown that it exceeds those test guidelines by two to tenfold. Well, of course it is. And the question is, if the signal is OK, um, that's fine. But again, we ha are in the middle of an experiment. Why do you want to have that capacity on all the time? Why do you want to be exposed unnecessarily to microwave radiation? Um, we, have, we ought to have the choice. When it comes to modern cars today, they're like a video game you walk into with a huge screen with all the bells and whistles and doodads. <clears throat> there is an increase in car deaths over the past three years. Nobody's been talking about it. There's no question in my mind and that of many others that these increased entertainment uh, centers inside vehicles are contributing to that. No. And a GPS uses a satellite. The concern for the GPS is distracted driving, not the ex phys physical exposure. I don't know. It's a good question. There's so much work that needs to be done. And the thing that's kind of outrageous, as I'm going to show you uh, today, is that we in the United States always call for research in response to identifying this problem, but we never do it. So if you look at the great body of research that's been done, most of it's been done outside of the United States. And you look at the one large study I'm going to talk about with the National Toxicology Program, there's a huge disinformation campaign rolling out right now to try to discredit and dismiss the results of the largest study ever done in this topic in the United States. Scientists who work in this field in the United States often find themselves without a job and without funding if they get results that the companies don't like. And I've written about that in my book, Disconnect. It's a dangerous area to work in in the United States. Well, distance is your friend. Start to disconnect yourself and recognize you need to claim your life back. You've got uh, Roger McNamee, one of the f founders of uh, Facebook now, warning about the addictive properties of all of these things, admitting that he's addicted and that the software has been programmed to addict people and calling for these companies uh, to be more responsible. You've got Jaina Partners and the California Teachers Union writing to Apple asking them to have better policies on children because there's a recognition that these companies work with and depend on the fact that they can make you want to be liked. Well, how many likes you have really isn't a measure of what kind of person you are. Not that I know of.
Yes, not so, a single one that I've ever seen that I've looked for independent data actually works. The people selling them are often well-meaning, they believe in it, and there is a placebo effect. I, I know that, but I have not seen any data showing that any of them work. And the thermography images they show with the heat, the heat is not what we're concerned about. We're concerned about the microwave radiation at levels that don't necessarily cause heat, but they can damage sperm. We know that from studies that have been done with healthy men. You take their sperm and you put it in two test tubes, and one test tube is not exposed to cell phone radiation and the other is. And the test tube exposed to cell phone radiation, those sperm die three times faster with three times more damage to their DNA. Yes, because of course metal is an, an antenna and it, it attracts these things. So you want to try to avoid that, but more importantly, you want your bedroom to be an EMF free zone. You can put a kill switch on for all the electricity in the bedroom. You can have a power strip connect all your devices and turn them off, but you should keep your devices out of your bedroom. And you should not have your phone under your pillow or fall asleep listening to, uh, to it unless it's on airplane mode. And for goodness sakes, don't sleep with a Fitbit or um, these, these things because we have growing evidence that these devices may be causing cardiac problems. Yes, they can monitor your heart rate, but they might also be altering it. EMFs, it's not just at this point a physiological issue. It's a psychological, spiritual, and moral issue. We've got to reclaim our rights and our privacy as individuals, and specifically in the family. Those families that are struggling with teenagers, you've got to take the devices away at dinner time. I w if I had teenagers now, I would absolutely take the devices away in the evening and make sure that they can't sneak out with their girlfriend or boyfriend, which has been known to happen, and they make rendezvous and text all night long. You've got to, you have to stop that. They need, teenagers need 10 to 12 hours of sleep and they're not getting it as, as it is. And many adults are sleep deprived as well because if you look at your device for the hour before you go to bed, it's stimulating and interfering with the natural production of melatonin that starts with the natural rhythm. We need sunlight in the morning to wake ourselves up and we need darkness so that we sleep and we produce melatonin that is a wonderful natural hormone that repairs damage in the nighttime. If you have a lot of blinking lights and blue lights in your bedroom, you're not going to get as restful asleep. sleep.